I am going to Wikimania in Singapore, and I'm really excited because I'm finally going to meet the guy that's in the photos on the Wikipedia article for theft. Um, he lives in Thailand. This actually got taken down recently, but it was up for a few years, and it's a little silly, but it really does demonstrate what theft is. <laughs> I got to meet the people in the Wikipedia photos for High Five. Um, they took these in 2008. Um, up high, down low, victim misses, too slow, with finger guns, and there's a hyperlink. They're still together. They were just like in an, kind of, they were like sort of dating in these photos. Now they're married and they have kids, and they recreated the photos. Dear friends of knowledge, don't worry, I'm not giving a long lecture here. But I was at the EduWiki conference in Belgrade. This means everything about Wikipedia and education. Artificial intelligence was the main topic, Wikidata, and everything that makes the Internet beautiful. I'll just compile here a few videos for you to give you an impression of the, con of the conference and what you can do with Wikipedia in the classroom. Small trigger warning, there may be traces of humor in this post. So you just have to meet them, but you don't have to talk. Yeah, please just face the person. You're not facing anybody, Frank. <laughs> okay, nice. So now what you have to do is make a sketch of that person that you're facing. A facial sketch. <laughs> yes, you have to face someone. Please pick a partner, anybody. Now, what do we have on the menu today? So I'm going to keep it quite simple because I think this keynote is more about all of us having a shared understanding and vision and a starting, sort of a plain starting ground to further discussions that we're going to have throughout this weekend together. You see here that we've had wiki clubs and wiki camps, especially in Armenia, right? But not only in K-12. We've also engaged with offline Wikipedia through Kiwiks in areas in the world that don't have infrastructure. In higher education, we've had various types of engagement. The most prevalent, the most common use uh, has been done by many of you, I think, sitting here in the room, and that is using Wikipedia, and by the way, I use Wikipedia as a general name to all Wikimedia projects, as you see, you'll see um, very soon, but we've been using it as an alternative assessment. That means that we've been collaborating with different educators to give an assignment in, in a course that is related to Wikipedia or to other wiki projects. A few things on Wikipedia that I think are quite funny. When you do carbon dating, there's a like, disambiguation because it's different from incest, which I think is funny. A few years ago, this went viral for being a goofy Wikipedia edit where someone thought it was important to specify which one was the penguin. <laughs> uh, this is a short video about me. I will explain a little bit where I come from. I come from Peru in a town called Nuñoa. It's a Quechua town in the south of Peru, and we mainly speak in Quechua language. And besides that, um, my journey uh, begin in 2019 when I first attended the Wikimania conference in Stockholm and there I decided to join to the team because uh, to the Wikimedia movement in general I don't have an affiliation or any user group but I do it by myself. Their education matters. I come from a country where education just complete has been decimated. So being here is personal on a lot of levels but also very exciting because this is my first wiki education conference and technically my first Wikimedia conference outside of the shores of Africa. <laughs> Before the pandemic we had this training of trainers for teachers and um, a lot of them uh, they they didn't even know how to operate like a browser or something. Huh. It was difficult for them and now we've seen that uh, just like, improvement, you know, um, a lot of them are more aware of like the use of technology and I think that's something that now we, we appreciate as something that's uh, really, uh, maybe it's not an innovation, but it's something that um, really helps to get the education moves forward. The one natural ally that we have 
whether it's in Morocco or in the United States or somewhere else on the planet, are the educators. And they're, uh, they're even, even within uh, a specific country, uh, they're dealing with a, a very different context sometimes. So uh, when you talk to someone who's at a prestigious university like Harvard, uh, or at someone who's at a rural community college, those are people that were uh, the, the answer of how we fit in it might be a very, very different one. And I think we need to listen to those people. They are our natural allies. And we need to better understand of where they're coming from and then adapt our answer to what their needs are and what the needs of their, their learners are. Etc. So I aimed to encourage collaboration by breaking down the writing process and then divide it again and again. What did the students think of this approach? That was awesome. No, of course not. In the final discussion, it was obvious that they were deeply dissatisfied. They wanted to keep working on their own text to the end. So I probed deeper. And I asked them, why didn't they help each other more? And what if they had worked under a pseudonym? Would it have then be easier to correct their fellow students' texts? So the gears in their minds started to turn, and they began to really grasp the purpose of the training. So this is an example how my exploration of uh, wiki theory has transformed my approach to teaching Wikipedia. But now you ask, but Zico, how did you make your students happy again? Stroopwafels. Oh. <laughs> so an old tradition. Thank you very much. Have a nice conference. <laughs> At the table there. <laughs> Thank you, Zico. So during COVID, we had 1.6 million students that were out of school, right? many schools shut down. And then people were like freaked out when they've seen these numbers and they wanted to help somehow. But the challenge was that they couldn't know how. Okay, let's say someone from UNESCO wanted to support education somewhere in the world. And let's pick Ghana as an example. They decided to help Ghana somehow, but there is a lack in information. They didn't know what Ghana teaches. We don't have any information online about what is this curriculum about. What do they teach in high school? What do they teach in primary school? We want to help, but we don't know how. We don't even know what they are teaching. So many, many challenges appeared during COVID. Many people wanted to help. Many organizations wanted to help and support education, but they had no clue about curriculums or what each part of the world teaches in their schools. So this is where this project came from. Like We wanted to open that door. We wanted to facilitate this kind of projects to arise and, and appear. Now, as the rain started falling, quite a beautiful soundtrack. Uh, let me talk to you about the key sort of elements of that research. First is looking at the, how our work builds information literacy. Now, this might be quite obvious to, to us here, but again, it's important for this fundraising or advocacy argument that we can show exactly the elements of information literacy that we address through Wikimedia activities. There is, of course, the under understanding of, of content that's kind of uh, investigating ideas, opinions, facts, thinking where it came from, so evaluating trustworthiness of information, verifying the information, fact-checking, and so on. When I came to Wikimedia, I inherited the job of, like, the work which has been done already, and it was awesome work have been done in the education uh, program already. And I as well inherited I think these few messages like writing Wikipedia is really sexy, so just work on it, <laughs> right? And I realized not. I don't know if you managed to sell it, but I'm not, I'm not very good in selling that uh, Wikipedia writing is sexy. It doesn't appear to the people around me. Um, and everybody wants to write Wikipedia, but they maybe just don't know yet. So again, dissemination, eh? I try to inform them, hey, we can actually write Wikipedia with us. Ah, come, awesome, editathon, sounds good, no? And they were often not coming and not joining. Um, so what is the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom program? I think some of you are already familiar with it, um, but it's basically an attempt 
to design a program that can help teachers take advantage of Wikipedia as a pedagogical tool by aligning it to the media and information literacy framework proposed by UNESCO. So through this program, we present Wikipedia uh, to the teachers and we present them how Wikipedia can help them to access information, evaluate the information they access, and then participate in the creation of this information. They, they really are trying to work, not only coming to the communities with the program, giving it to the teachers and then moving on, but they're really trying to engage with the teachers, build, adapt, uh, shape the program in a way that is meaningful for them because they recognize that when they go into these municipalities, into these rural areas, they're going in contexts that are very different from their own, even if they are from the same country. In these years, uh, Armenian Wikipedia has been one of the dynamically developing Wikipedias in Eastern Europe and uh, Southern Caucasus. For years, a lot of events, trainings, or projects were initiated to improve the uh, textual content of uh, Armenian Wikipedia. Even the number of articles increased because of the translation from other language Wikipedias, especially in Armenian, it is Russian and English. But the visual content of the articles were mainly stayed unimproved. And even uh, when they translated it from Russian or uh, English, they took the uh, visuals from there and they uh, even uh, haven't uh, translated uh, uh, textual content of that uh, visuals. So we're, we were thinking about that enriching uh, Wikipedia with quality visuals may attract uh, people to spend more time in Wikipedia to obtain, contribute and also share knowledge from there. What else? Oh, um, in 2003, when people were deciding what logo to do, before they decided on like the puzzle piece globe, one of the, one of the submissions was the Wikipede, a little centipede with Groucho glasses, and notice he's made out of encyclopedia books. Anyway, I just think he's kind of cute. Well, uh, hello again. I'm Hernan from Wikimedia Colombia, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Wikimedia Education Program Adapting to a Peace-Building Context in Colombia. So what is a peace-building context? It's a transition scenario. In November 2016, the Colombian government signed a peace agreement with the FARC guerrillas, the oldest guerrilla in the continent, that after 56 years of war left uh, very uh, deeply damaging impacts in, in the context. Very briefly, uh, the project was inspired by Women in Red, but it's going to focus, it is focusing on three target minority languages. So it's, um, we have partners in the Basque country, in Ireland, and uh, in, the, uh, in Friesland, in the Netherlands. And the idea is to get uh, high school students to focus on writing biographies about notable women relevant to their regions or their languages. Um, so promoting the language and our quote unquote unknown histories, which of course you know, we know that women's history isn't unknown, it's just undocumented a lot of the time. It's about a very serious topic. On the one hand, I must say you are the best audience I ever saw. You always listen to the presenter. You never have a screen in front of you, no laptop, no smartphone. But the downside is we are hardly visible on social media. So I wonder what's the reason for that? And I simply think you still need some suggestions what to post on social media. So um, could you please do the next quiz question with some ideas that you can post on social media? We do everything together, there's no I in Wikipedia. A Wikipedia article about you, the costs will surprise you. <laughs> Thanks to Wikipedia, I have friends in all parts of the world, but none in my neighborhood, and the local conference team is great, of course. They're all wrong, They're all wrong answers. <laughs> all wrong answers. I remember that I remind you that this is very new software for everybody, <laughs> including us. On that note, if you do not wish to wait for the bus, or if you want to stay longer in the city, you're by no means obliged to take the bus. You can take a taxi or a bus or some, uh, a public bus or anything else to reach, or you can walk here. Why not? It's an hour and a half. Um, 
good sobering experience. Um, <laughs> so, um, but yes, our organized buses will leave at 11.30 from the spot that we will show you. So, please enjoy yourself. <laughs> you did not expect that. Okay, so we have call for participation. I education survey featured on the uh, Wiki Education newsletter. We have the editor turn on Serbian Wikipedia on the occasion of Edu Wiki Week. Now, uh, for most people they, that are not uh, familiar with the Edu Wiki newsletter, they might not get to know some of these interesting activities that have been happening across different countries. And uh, you only get to see some of these uh, activities featured on the education newsletter. So it's a kind of a periodical that we share monthly for people who work in the education, who have um, like carry out programs related to education to also kind of feature their stories so that we can also get to learn more about what you do and uh, help to create more visibility and recognition for your, for your activities. And then the main difference um, of Wiki Journal is that the peer review system, rather than having um, pre-publication review by a two or three experts, we also have post-publication peer review and public peer review, which means that people who, can, who come across the article online, anyone who come across the article online, can have their say on the article before, during, or even after the uh, publication yeah. process. So um, I will present very briefly um, all the possibilities and some examples of how we use Wikipedia's translator here in Serbia. Uh, after that, I would like to reflect and discuss things with you and to hear your experiences. And at the end, um, I prepared here um, some paper. Maybe you should um, um, work in, a group, in smaller groups and answer some questions. To the presentation on the program and events dashboard, tips and tricks. Um, I am Leanna Davis, and I have been here as the chair of the Wikipedia Education User Group for every other session, and I'm going to switch hats here and wear the hat of my actual day job, which is working for Wiki Education, which is the organization that runs the education program in the United States and Canada. And we are also the organization that develops and maintains the dashboard. So um, I'm going to present about PetScan tool and I'm going to explain to you how can we use this tool in order to identify Wikipedia articles that needs translation or expansion or, um, or maybe having some problems in their uh, templates. So uh, the goals of this workshop is first I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the PetScan tool. Then I'm going to talk a bit about the importance of, uh, of this tool, especially for those who are organizing workshops and education program editions. <laughs> Hello, yeah. everyone. My name is Dian. I'm from Wikimedia Indonesia, so my interest language is ID or Indonesian. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. what? What are your preferred categories? Um, women. Women? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Women. Indonesian women. Indonesian yeah, maybe women. a more specific Indonesian woman. Yeah, okay. Okay, so which language are you? I'm, I'm, I'm searching for um, the articles that under this category in the English Wikipedia, EN, okay, EN. So now I'm going to go to Wikidata, as you can see. Wikidata. And here has none of these site links. So I want um, to tell this tool that I want the articles that do not have uh, like a version in the ID wiki. Okay? Is that clear? Okay. So then I will get back to categories and then I will press do it. Are you ready? Yeah. Um, and you can, instead of being connected to the internet, you connect yourself to this little Wi-Fi, which is usually the, the size of this room, more or less, a classroom. It will cover a dozen of, of users at the same time, so this can be used in classroom context. And it can also be very easily put in your pocket. So uh, the reason why we initially developed the system ourselves was because we had groups who wanted to run editatons, and everything was prepared, the, 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 
the people invited were here, they had the content, they had the will, and at the last moment, no electricity, no internet, what do we do? So they had a backup system, and on the SD card, we can put anything we want, including Kiwix content. And this is the, uh, this is the question I ask, uh, like, in our community in Poland all the time. Who uh, can be called Wikipedian? So the old Wikipedians uh, say a lot that oh, I have 12,000 editions and I started 2001 February. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm the Wikipedian. Or no, Clara, your first edition was on Wikimedia Commons. It, it was like that. Uh, so you are not like, you can't say you are Wikipedian. Uh, and so on, so on. Uh, so, um, we are more and more uh, inviting young people, schools, and everyone. So I know this is con really confusing for the um, the people who are stick to, an, to to the different pro to the separate projects. And I know many of my colleagues left Wikipedia and switched to Wikidata. <laughs> uh, so when we introduce. Uh, Wikipedia in schools, we are like, wow, great, you will be happy, this is something better than writing assignment for a literature project. And, uh, but I started also telling about village pump dramas and so on, because I want to be honest with them. And so we use a Moodle platform to do this. It's an internal course for our teachers for a professional development certification. So we, we were very proud. But after four rounds of this course, we wonder, and what are they doing after the course? No? What are they doing, these teachers? We just give them the certificate and bye-bye. So now what we are doing, oh, sorry. <laughs> What we are doing now is interviewing them. We send them a, a survey asking, what are you doing after the course? What changed? And they are saying so interesting things. We are doing this for, uh, with a twofold uh, objective. Uh, the first is uh, having testimonies in an official page of the university. And that gives so much proud to the teachers to be featured in this space. And the other thing is showing others, of course, uh, what projects have been done in the university in several levels, uh, K-12, uh, graduated school, post-graduated school, or libraries also. Feedback from the students, from every stakeholders. But on the other hand, we cannot do structured research. So the data would be with us, we would be ready to collect them, but this has to it has to come from somewhere else to do the research based on that and to formulate what were the successes and failures. Uh, occasionally, we, we are able to do create individual partnerships. We are ready to go to local schools, universities, and talk with the um, people who are responsible there and initiate partnerships. But to sustain partnerships, to build institutional partnerships, to formalize those partnerships, we need help from elsewhere. Um, oh, Umarel is a beloved Wikipedia article and term for old men who stare at construction sites with their arms behind their backs, <laughs> sometimes offering unwanted advice. <laughs> um, this is the ugliest color in the world. According to a marketing panel in Australia, it's like dark greenish brown. And then this is the, oh, it's, see, it doesn't really project well, but it's the average color of the universe. It's like the color of khakis on <laughs> to this, this conference that's, that's been in planning for uh, years, as Shani says. Um, I did not mention that we were supposed to organize this conference in October 2020. Uh, we all know what happened, so that's the main reason why it was postponed, and we waited and waited to find a good and safe time and place to organize this. So. I'm really glad that we <laughs> did this, so our four-plus-year dream has finally come true. And I'm, I'm very, very joyful that I can see you again after such a long period of unfortunate global events. So um, I also have another uh, information. Due to the rainy season that happened in the last two days, uh, we came upon the idea to have uh, one more uh, possible tour that would start at 3.30 if it's not raining. Uh, it, is com it, it is completely voluntary. Uh, it will be a tour around the center of Belgrade, the parts that you did not 
uh, get to see yesterday. With the huge, uh, this was like the, how do you call it? Like the people that know everything about everyone, that was their government buildings. 